You are listening to the Life Coach School podcast with Brooke Castillo, episode number 54. Welcome to the Life Coach School podcast, where it's all about real clients, real problems, and real coaching. And now your host, Master Coach Instructor, Brooke Castillo. Hi, everyone. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastically well. I'm thrilled that you guys are here and back for another podcast. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Nicole. Thinking of you. So <laughs> those are uh, two of my students from the in-person, and they were wondering if I was going to mention them on a podcast. So there it is. My super fans. I'm mentioning them. I'm in love with those girls. Anyway, let's go. Today, we're going to talk about useful emotions. Now, I will say this is some of the most important work that I have done, I would say, within the past year on myself. I'm always wanting to grow and expand my knowledge base, but also my own wisdom. And what I mean by that is I'm always like trying to learn from other teachers and reading and studying from them. But I'm also really determined to access my own wisdom. And one of the things that I've noticed is that the less I have thoughts that don't serve me, the more I can access thoughts that come from a place that I don't really know where it comes from. (laughs) There are often times when I'm coaching someone and I say something to them and I don't know where it came from. And they're like, oh my gosh, that was the most helpful thing you just said. And it trips me out because sometimes I don't know where that thought came from. I feel like I'm just really in the present moment. I don't have any of my own thoughts about the client or myself going on. And I'm able to access kind of a deeper level of myself. And I'm going to talk about that in a future podcast episode because it's really changed the way that I've done my coaching and also the work I've done on myself. When I first started coaching, I was much more interested in replacing negative thoughts with positive thought. I think that was influenced by my study of Byron Katie, who really taught me that you could take a thought and just turn it completely around, the complete opposite of that thought, and use that opposite of that thought. And that really had served me. But what I have found as I've done this work longer and longer is that You don't even really need to replace the thought with your own self-coaching. And even with my clients, it's just kind of a natural progression if you allow the new thought to kind of appear. And one of the first things you have to recognize is that your current thinking is what's causing your feelings. You are feeling your thoughts. You are feeling that sentence in your mind. So as I've been doing this work, one of the things that's really come true for me and really helped me understand is the study of emotion in my own self. And I've talked a lot about it on this podcast, but today I want to talk about useful emotions. I had never really thought about my feelings being useful until I was studying the model with actually one of my students and we were talking about how thoughts drive our actions and that really the fuel for all the actions that we have in our life come from our emotions. And a lot of times we think what we want to experience is peace and love and serenity. And usually when I ask my clients that, that's what they say they want to experience. But when you are in the process of creating something, when you're in the process of evolving kind of into another version of yourself, because for some of us, we dig that stuff. (laughs) We don't want to just feel peaceful all of the time. And I know that there's some of you that do want to feel peaceful all the time. That's a beautiful thing. But for some people, we want to use our emotions to help us create what we want in the world. So one of the things that I had been thinking about in terms of entrepreneurship was the idea of courage. I was listening to one of my teachers, Dan Sullivan, talk about courage. And he what he said was that courage doesn't feel good, and yet it's very necessary. And my brain exploded, <laughs> like it sometimes does. And I went, wait a minute. If courage is such a useful emotion, if it helps us do the things we're afraid to do, 
And I can see how courage has helped us evolve literally as human beings. I mean, back in the day, it required courage to kill things that were going to eat us or kill things that we needed to eat. I can see how courage is just really a powerful, important emotion, and yet it doesn't feel good. So then I started thinking about this idea that I've been having kind of an issue with, with the whole life coaching industry. And the pushback I've been getting from some people is that we should always want to feel happy all of the time. And if we can't feel happy all the time, then what is the point? And I don't think we're meant to feel happy all of the time. And in fact, I talk about this a lot on this podcast. I think 50% of the time, we're not going to feel a really enjoyable emotion. And it doesn't mean we have to feel negative emotion. And I think there are some emotions that are indulgent emotions. And I'm going to talk about those in a minute. But stay with me, you guys, because this is kind of a new concept that I have been studying. And it has been life changing for me and for my clients. So I absolutely wanted to share it here with you. So let's talk about the idea of useful emotion. So I mentioned one, which is courage. I think that's a very useful emotion. Another emotion that I think is very useful is determination. Now I want you guys to think about feeling determined and that doesn't always feel great. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like when you think about being determined, I think about me having like a little bit of tension in my body, a little bit of grit right? It doesn't feel like ease. It doesn't feel like peace. It doesn't feel like cool water on a hot day. It feels strong to me. And it has a little hint of effort in it, right? As I feel it, I can feel myself kind of get like getting revved up a little bit. So I think that's another very useful emotion and it's been super powerful for me to remind myself that feeling determined is very useful, although it's not always very pleasurable to feel determined. Now, some people may say that they feel very, a lot of pleasure when they feel determined, but I was thinking about for my weight loss clients and I was thinking about this idea of them feeling determined to lose weight and being willing to feel determined, which doesn't feel as good as the pleasure of giving in to overeating, right? It's that it's a useful emotion, but it doesn't feel like comfort. And are we willing to be uncomfortable? And that's another one of the emotions I put as a useful emotion is discomfort. Because here's the thing, I think that growth is uncomfortable, And I've always said, and I say, I've said this on this podcast is I think your willingness to be uncomfortable will be in direct proportion to what you create that you want. (laughs) I think that's such a bummer, but I think it's true, right? So I think whatever it is you want to create in your life, the path to it is not always going to be comfortable, right? It's going to bring up stuff maybe that will cause you to be uncomfortable. And oftentimes I think that is the point. Another feeling that I like to feel is persistence. Now I was debating whether that was an emotion or not. And I was kind of debating on what it feels like, but I do own it as an emotion because I think it's different than determined. I think it feels different. I think it feels more... I don't know how to explain it. Like I feel it more in my gut. So you guys will have to tell me in the comments if you experience those two as different. Another useful emotion, crazy useful emotion is acceptance. Acceptance of our circumstances that we can't control. Acceptance of ourselves and what our brains do. I mean, let's just call it acceptance of our brains. One of the things I noticed in our in-person training was how many of us want to judge our brains and judge the opinions in our brains and be embarrassed by the opinions in our brains. But what if we could just accept what's going on with our brains? We don't have to judge it in order to change it. Acceptance sometimes doesn't feel great, right? Think about it. Acceptance is a useful emotion, right? It creates us into a life we want more often than not. 
more often than resistance, but acceptance doesn't always feel good. I mean, sometimes I just imagine that, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow sometimes acceptance, acceptance that everybody is really doing their best, even when their best is terrible, (laughs) right? Acceptance that things are going to happen in our lives that we don't want to have happen. Acceptance that other people are going to behave exactly the way they want to behave with or without our input. And the more we're willing to accept it, the better our lives are going to be because it's, we're going to have less resistance. So if you think about that resistance and hate and frustration, that all comes from a lack of acceptance. So even though acceptance doesn't feel awesome all the time, it's definitely something I would choose over resistance or hate. The other one that, and I had already mentioned this one was discomfort and that willingness to be emotionally uncomfortable and even physically uncomfortable as we are heading towards our dreams in our lives. So I want you guys to think about what emotions are the most useful to you when it comes to the goals you want in your life. So think about, if you think about that model, think about the result you want in your life and then think about what would be the best emotion to fuel that result. Sometimes compassion may be the appropriate emotion and sometimes it may be determination. Sometimes it may be acceptance. You can think about what is the result? What is the action you're going to have to take to get that result? And what feeling do you want to fuel that action? Where do you want to be coming from when you're taking that action? Really cool, useful thing to think about. Okay. Now let's talk about useful emotions that feel good. Okay. I talked about some useful emotions that don't necessarily feel good, but let's talk about some that do feel good. I came up with a short list and I would love to hear what you guys have to add to this list. Confidence. Oh yeah. (laughs) I think that's the best one, right? Confidence feels so good. And I'm not talking about false pretending to be confident. I'm talking about feeling confident. It's when you have studied so hard for a test, you know, there can't be anything on that test that you don't know the answer to. It's when you are going to help someone and you know, you have the tools to be able to help them without a doubt, right? It's when you have prepared, when you have practiced and you know that you have the ability to get it done. That's confidence. I love the feeling of confidence. I try and do a lot of my work, my coaching work to really fill my mind with ideas of confidence, right? And I do notice, as I was mentioning before, that when I clean up my thinking, I realize that my natural state is typically one of confidence when I can get all of the other noise out of my mind And when there's no other thoughts that bring me out of kind of alignment with myself, I feel very confident. I see that as a very useful emotion because from confidence, we will take the risks, right? We will do the things that are needed for us to show up in our lives. Another great, I think, useful emotion is eagerness. When you feel eager, I saw that on a list of emotions and it got me so excited. I'm like, oh, I love that feeling of being eager because it feels like I'm young and energetic and I can't wait. And it de- it's not really about how perfectly I'm going to do something. I just can't wait to do it. I love that emotion. I love the emotion of excited. I think a lot of us can relate to that, being excited about something, thinking thoughts that create that level of excitement and how fun it is to take action from that fuel, that fuel of excitement, that action just seems to come so much more easily. I like the emotion of motivated. I like feeling really motivated to do something. I think that's one of those feelings that's a little bit in between feeling good and not feeling as good. Motivated can sometimes come from a place where it's got a little bit of an edge to it. And I think that's okay. I think it's very useful, but it doesn't always feel pleasurable. The last one I had for useful emotions that feel good is curious. That's one thing I think I'm telling, you know, and fascinated 
I'm always telling my students when it comes to their clients and when it comes to themselves, those emotions of being curious and fascinated will serve them so much more than any other emotion because it puts you in a place of being open to understanding instead of trying to shut everything down and trying to guess and being opinionated and judgmental, being curious and fascinated by everything that we do. If we can be curious by what's going on in someone's brain, then we can be the best kind of coach because all we're interested in is understanding what's going on in there. We're not trying to judge the person by the contents of their mind. Now, I think it's important to think about useful emotions. And one of the things that I do at the school and one of the things that I teach is that you should understand what your top three emotions are on a regular basis by observing them and then remind yourself that those emotions are choices. And when you look at the emotions that you're having in your life, if you are directing them consciously, are those the emotions that are going to give you that result you want? Now, for example, if one of the results you want is a peaceful, happy home and the emotions that you're feeling are peaceful and happy, that's probably a pretty good bet that you're on the right track. If you're wanting to overcome a huge obstacle in your life and you're feeling at ease and joyous, you may not have the right fuel to overcome that obstacle. Now, I can already hear people pushing back and saying, well, can't you overcome an obstacle with joy? And my answer is absolutely yes, but we most often don't, (laughs) right? Most often we don't overcome obstacles with joy. And in fact, we don't even attempt to overcome an obstacle because we, we want joy instead, And overcoming the obstacle usually can take away that joy. It does not have to. But I think sometimes we need to use different emotions to accomplish different things. And, you know, one of the imagery that I like to create for my students is if I had a platter, if I was walking around a really fancy party and I had a platter of emotions and I was asking you if you would like one, which one would you pick? And I love that we have the opportunity to pick consciously and to decide consciously what we want to feel and that we can create our emotions with our minds. And in fact, we do create all of our emotions with our minds, whether we do it intentionally or not. And one of the things that I'm suggesting is that the more intentional we can be with the emotions we create, the closer our life will be to what we are guiding ourselves to create. So let's talk a little bit about indulgent emotions. This is one of the concepts I brought up at the um, training, and it was very interesting to see what people tended to indulge in. One of the things that I see very common, first of all, it's amazing to me about how many indulgent emotions feel terrible. (laughs) Right? Isn't that a bummer? It's like when my clients indulge in food that they don't even like. You know, like I have clients that are, (laughs) makes makes me think about this. I have clients that overeat skinny cow ice cream because what they really want is real ice cream. So they're just eating 12 and 13 bars of skinny bar ice cream. And it makes me laugh. I bought these cookies, these caveman cookies is what they're called. I'm totally into this caveman brand. It's the guy, he's a local guy here in California and he, he made a uh, muscle milk and he's also created this caveman brand. And one of the things that he's done is he's created a cookie that, you know, doesn't have anything crappy in it. And so the kids saw the box and they said, Oh, cookies. We're so excited. Cause we usually don't have a lot of sugar in the house. And, um, <laughs> it was so funny. My son opens up the cookie and I'm like, Oh, you'll have to let me know what you think. Cause it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have anything bad for you in it. And I said, so what do you think? And he looked at me and he said, I don't think you should mess with cookies. <laughs> was so good. He did not like the cookies. He threw the rest of the cookie away because it isn't really a cookie and you shouldn't mess with cookies. So good. So anyway, so it's amazing to me how many things we indulge in that don't feel good. Like I look at like, um, 
you know, people that smoke cigarettes that literally hate smoking cigarettes, people that drink alcohol that literally do not like the fact that they drink alcohol. They don't even like the taste of it, right? So people indulging in negative emotion, even though they don't like the feeling of that emotion, that's what a habit is, right? That's what doing something that you don't want to do over and over and over again, that's a bad habit. So one of the indulgent emotions that many of us indulge in consistently is comfort. And a lot of us mistaken familiarity for comfort. So even though it's something that doesn't feel good and isn't serving us because we've done it so consistently and it's familiar, we feel like it's comfortable because it's known. Okay. A lot of us indulge in comfort in a very inordinate amount, right? Where, what do we want comfort? What do we want comfort? What do we want in every moment? We want pleasure and we want comfort at the expense of what we truly want to create in our lives. Another indulgent emotion is self-righteousness. We want to be right. We'd rather be right than feel good. It's like that being indignant about something because you want to be right. It's an indulgent emotion that ultimately doesn't serve most of us in our lives. Another one is worry. Tell this story often about how two years ago at my mastermind group, I told everyone that I was going to go on a worry-free diet. I decided I was going to cut worry out of my life like people cut gluten out of their diets. And anytime I started to feel worry, I would block myself from feeling it. It was not an option. I could not see an upside to feeling that emotion. The thoughts that created it were always thoughts about something I couldn't control in this moment. And so I really genuinely just didn't see any purpose for it. So I stopped literally experiencing that emotion. I did not allow myself to go there. And that was a trip. I've never like thought that I could just eliminate an emotion I didn't want to feel. And, but certainly I was able to do it. And so, and it completely changed my life. I will tell you that because as soon as I would feel myself going down that path of that thought pattern, feeling pattern, action pattern, I completely just redirected myself. Like I was a toddler and redirected my mind to something that would create something besides worry. So I think worry is one of those. I love the way Eckhart Tolle says worry pretends to be necessary. So true. And I realize that it's not necessary. It's not needed. It's not useful at all. So I have completely eliminated it. Whenever my mind tends to want to worry, and this especially happens to me with my children, it really wants to worry a lot. I redirect it, redirect it, redirect it. It's incredibly powerful. Some other indulgent emotions are doubtful, doubting ourselves, doubting other people. I haven't found an upside to being doubtful, right? I've found an upside to figuring things out. I found an upside to researching more, but being doubtful of my own self especially has not served me. Now, confusion, I would say confusion when it comes to my entrepreneurs that I work with is probably the number one indulgent emotion. People want to indulge in I don't know. And any of you who have taken a class from me or been coached by me know that I do not allow that answer. It's just like worry. It's not allowed in my life. I don't allow. I don't know in my life period. So I can say I'm learning something. I can say I'm figuring something out. I can say I'm researching something. I can say I don't understand something yet. But to say I don't know in a way where it creates confusion that isn't helpful, I do not do it. Now, I hear the pushback. Someone's going to say, well, what if you don't know the answer to a math problem? Okay. Notice that that kind of, I don't know, isn't a dream blocker, but that's not the, I don't know I'm talking about. I'm talking about this confusion. I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how I think. I don't know anything where you are the one with access to the wisdom is where I don't allow confusion. And I tell my clients when they tell me they, that they don't know, I say, if you did know, what would the answer be? And nine times out of 10, they come up with the most brilliant, beautiful answer. 
right? That's accessed from a place that they've been blocking confusion. What if you didn't allow yourself to be confused by things? What if you told yourself, I know what I want to do and you believed it? How would your life be different? A couple other indulgent emotions are insecurity. I think people think insecurity is something that they validly feel that expresses some thing that's happened to them in their life. I say insecurity is a choice and insecurity is not useful at all. If you could pick any other emotion besides insecurity, right? Maybe confidence (laughs) would be an option. And I'm not saying that you can go from insecurity to confidence, but I'm saying you insecurity, feeling like that's an emotion that's just coming over you and it's not one that you're creating is not useful. And the last one, and this is kind of one of my favorite ones, is offended. I have people in my life that are very easily offended. And I think it's very indulgent. I think it's kind of one of those victim-y things that people do. They're very easily offended. I didn't like the way she looked at me. I don't like the way she walked by me. I don't like the way she didn't say my name. I don't like the way she didn't call on me. I don't like the way, whatever. I don't like the way she said that, or I, I didn't like the way she acknowledged me, or I don't like the way, whatever it is. I feel like why would you choose to be easily offended? Feeling offended feels terrible, right? So I've made it a goal in my life that is very, very difficult to offend me. A lot of times, because I have a very sarcastic personality, in case you haven't noticed, a lot of times I'm very sarcastic with people and then they're very sarcastic back. And then they're like, oh, I hope that was okay. I hope that wasn't over the top. I'm like, listen, you're going to have to get up a lot earlier in the morning to say something that's going to offend me. What I like to indulge in all of the time is laughter. And I think anything that's said can be interpreted as funny. And so why not? Why not just laugh as much as humanly possible? I think that's what I do. My friend Jody said to me the other day, she goes, because it's so funny, whenever Jody and I go out, I'm not exaggerating. I would say one out of three times, someone will come up to us and say, we just want to hang out with you guys. We just want to be with you. Can we come with you? And it's so funny. And I was trying to figure it out the other day. And I think it's just because I'm laughing the whole time. She's usually laughing the whole time. And I think people want to be around laughter. And so I... Jody was saying to me the other day, she goes, well, I just think that people want to be around you because you just laugh at everything they say. And people love that. And I go, but everything is really funny. Don't you think it's funny? I mean, how can you say that that isn't funny? That's what was so great about this last in-person training that we did. It was just like the, everyone in that group was so funny. Oh my God, we were laughing so hard. And people, I just think that whatever the combination of people was there. I mean, I was just cracking up most of the time. And so was everybody else. I mean, we just had such a fun time. And I really like to use humor when it comes to learning how to coach ourselves and looking at our own brains, because I think it lightens up the work so much and makes it so much easier. So I think being offended is kind of the opposite of that. Like, oh, I was so offended by that TV commercial. I just don't understand it. I don't understand why someone would choose to be offended by a TV commercial or choose to be offended by anything. So I notice myself sometimes, (laughs) so funny, we had a situation with my soccer team where one of the guys that runs the soccer team is very, let's call him old school. And we all came and sat down and he was saying, hey, I just want to thank everybody for coming to this meeting, especially the moms, because I know you moms are home all day and you're the ones making dinner and this is dinner time and hopefully the dads in this day and age are helping you all out, but we just get to come from work and and you've been home all day. And I was like, is this guy for real? (laughs) Every single woman in that room, except for one worked full time, except for one. And she worked part time and he was just so out of touch. Now I could have been very offended and I could have said to him, you know, that's not I'm a feminist and that's not okay, but I just get it. I get where he's coming from. I get that it's his mind and what he's thinking. And here's the truth. I know that it wasn't ill intended. He was actually trying to say something very kind. He was trying to be kind when he said that. So for me to get offended about something like that made no sense to me. And yet so many people are offended, 
easily by something like that. So that's just my last kind of indulgent emotion. Now, what I want to know from you all is what are your useful emotions? Which ones do you want to feel more of more of the time? And what are your indulgent emotions? What do you indulge in? Is it comfort? Is it offended? Is it worry? Is it self-righteousness? Is it anger? What do you indulge in that isn't useful? Anger is a big one, right? Because people could prevent themselves from getting angry by managing their minds. I used to like get angry all of the time. Like I would lose my mind with my kids. I would get so mad at them and I rarely lose my mind (laughs) at all anymore because I'm always watching it. (laughs) So it's kind of hard to lose it. It's like when I feel myself kind of going there, it's just, I know it's not going to be useful. And I don't like the way I act when I'm angry because it doesn't serve anyone. And, um, (laughs) <laughs> it's really funny because my husband and I work together. And so sometimes we'll be, <laughs> this just happened today. Actually, he was on the phone with one of our assistants and he put it on pause. And then he and I were like, bah, 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 getting mad at each other. And it was making me laugh. I was like, this is so not useful. And I, of course, told him he, I thought he was crazy and out of his mind and didn't take any responsibility for my own feelings, but blamed them all on him, which of course was my true emotional childhood coming out. But I really just saw, it was like laughing afterwards. I'm like, there's so no point in getting angry. It served no purpose, right? So that's another one to kind of think about how often do you allow yourself to indulge in it? In some way, does it make you feel falsely powerful? I think that's why a lot of us do it. So think about that. Think about the useful ones you want more of, and they can be the ones that feel good and the ones that don't feel so great. And which ones are you indulging in that you want to indulge in less? I'd love to have the conversation with you. Go to the lifecoachschool.com and that is the, T-H-E, lifecoachschool.com forward slash 54. And webinar coming up would love to have you join me live. Go to thelifecoachschool.com. It's right there on the homepage. Click on it, register, and I'll see you on the webinar. Have an awesome week. Talk to you next week, everyone. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Life Coach School podcast. It would be incredibly awesome if you would take a moment to write a quick review on iTunes. For any questions, comments, or coaching issues you would like to hear on the show, please visit us at www.thelifecoachschool.com. 